This video will explain video classification with convolutional neural networks. The overview of the presentation is as follows. First, we're going to talk about video data. What makes collecting video data so challenging and why each individual instance is so large in file size. Then we'll talk about the spatial temporal CNNs pictured here that are presented in the paper. Then we'll talk about multi-resolution models and how the authors achieve a four times speed up by using multi-resolution streams. Then we'll talk about how data augmentation is used in video classification, data set noise in the video data sets, and then the overall spatial temporal multi-resolution model results. In video classification, achieving big data sets is very difficult. This isn't just due to labeling problems, but also mainly due to the storage size. So a video compared to an image is a stack of frames. So if you have a 200 by 200 resolution with, with RGB, you have 200 by 200 by 3 pixels, and each pixel needs 8 uh, bytes to store the two, 0 to 255 values. But a video would be a stack of these frames. So for one second of video, you have 30 images at 30 FPS. So the data sets that they use are the Sports 1 million and UCF 101. The Sports 1 million contains 1 million YouTube videos in 487 classes, and the UCF 101 data set contains 13,000 videos in 100 classes, 101 classes. So they pre-process the video data by cropping them to a fixed size length. And this is problematic because in sequence learning, you want to be able to deal with variable length sequences. For example, you want to be able to classify a 30 second video with the same ability as you classify a 45 second video. This is one of the key ideas in the paper, the spatial temporal CNN. So what they're going to try to do is take advantage of CNNs, convolutional neural networks, across different time scales. The first model is a single frame model, where they just use a CNN to extract image features from a single frame in the video. The late fusion has uh, very wide spaces between frames used to aggregate features. In their experiments, they use 15 frames in between the two frames used in late fusion. Early fusion uh, collects a contiguous chunk of frames and processes it similar to the single frame model. The slow fusion model takes these interesting overlapping patches, processes them, processes them in separate towers, and then combines them later on. The multi-resolution model is used to reduce computation. And this is something that Elon Musk was talking about with Lex Friedman in their interview. What they do is they have a context stream and a foveal stream. And the context stream operates on the downsampled overall clip whereas the foveal stream focuses on the high resolution center crop. And this is, uh, they choose a center crop due to camera bias. This is an overall diagram showing how the multi-resolution model works. On the top is the center crop from the original high resolution image, and on the bottom is the downsized original image. For data augmentation, they resize all video clips to 200 by 200 pixels. They randomly sample a 170 by 170 region and then with 50% probability, they horizontally flip the images. Additionally, they pre-process the images by subtracting the mean from all pixels. One other interesting detail is the hierarchical output space of the Sports 1 million dataset. Hierarchical output spaces are used in word to vec and they're used in the famous, famous paper, uh, Dermatologist Level Skin Cancer Classification. So what they do is the model doesn't directly predict the classes in the same way as if all the uh, classes were unrelated. What it does is it predicts a traversal along the tree, and then it's criticized based on the leaf and then the hierarchical nodes as well. So if it makes it to the bowling node, it'll be, even if it gets a, like the type of bowling incorrectly, it'll receive less of a loss than as if it had gone to one of the football uh, parent nodes. So there is some noise in the data set as well. The way the Sports 1 million data set is constructed is that it's annotated based on the tag prediction algorithm or the uploader provided description. In addition to this, there's a lot of variation within the frames. So what they give as an example is if it's a video labeled as soccer, there might be some clips of them playing soccer and then some of the scoreboard or bleachers or sky or something like that. So they train this model for over a period of one month. 
And this is where they note the multi-resolution architecture speed up. So they note that they would be able to do five clips per second with a full frame net, but they achieved 20 clips per second with the multi-resolution network. During this training, they see approximately 500 million examples throughout the training period. These are the results that the different models achieve on the sports 1 million data set. As is shown here, the CNN is able to outperform the feature histograms. However, the different uh, spatial temporal models don't really seem to differ from each other too much. These are some of the different classes where spatial temporal models outperform single frame models. And it's kind of interesting to see because it maybe uh, suggests that the intraclass variance is highly de is uh, influential on whether or not the spatial feature temporal features are useful. One other interesting thing they do is they test the effect of transfer learning from Sports 1 million to UCF 101. And then they uh, fine tune on the 101 classes from the UCF dataset. So this is really interesting and they achieve a really good result doing this. So in conclusion, the CNN is able to outperform the visual bag of words features for video classification. The multi-resolution model, probably the most interesting component of this paper, saves four times of the computation cost. They find success with transfer learning from Sports 1 million to UCF 101, but the spatial temporal designs aren't very effective between one another. They outperform, generally outperform the bag of words features, but the difference between late fusion and early fusion and slow fusion doesn't seem to be uh, very big. Thanks for watching this video on video classification. The paper link is provided in the description. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.